Hello everyone and welcome to my After Effects tutorial. In this episode, I'm going to show you something seriously cool and very very new. <laughs> very very new. <laughs> That's a good joke, right? Right? No? Well, at least I tried. Anyways, awesome people, today's episode is going to be covering how to do some trailer design in Adobe After Effects and I'm going to have a different approach towards motion graphics. Now the reason I'm doing this tutorial video is to show you guys that you can have a different way to create motion graphics for your client, for your YouTube videos or for something that you may be doing, you know, for the heck of it. So uh, let's get started awesome people. Now this is what we are going to be learning today. And awesome people, this is gonna be an epic video because again, you know, a different approach towards motion graphics. And uh, before getting started with the tutorial video, I want to introduce you guys to a very cool website called cgtextures.com. Awesome people, this is an amazing website. They have tons and tons of images of different things. For example, awesome people, they have images of skulls, right? Skulls, bones, bones and skulls everywhere. But jokes aside, awesome people, this is an amazing website for matte painting artists, 3D people, motion graphics artists like And uh, I'm going to be using a lot of resources from this website. This is for free, by the way. Uh, you can use these images commercially for, uh, on your projects and you don't have to, uh, you know, pay them and you won't get into any sort of problem. So uh, I, I, I'm going to be using a few images. Uh, from them for example uh, what I would like you guys to do if you, if you want to follow along with me would be to go to CG textures and get some icy images like this now you can type broken eyes the, the reason why I'm not giving you links to download this is because they have tons of images and you can you know just you using different images create something very cool and very different uh, from mine so uh, yeah so again you know do that and uh, these are the images that I was able to get from them and using this awesome people, I was able to create this motion graphic. Now, believe it or not awesome people, the trailer animation that I just showed you, only 10% of it was made in Adobe After Effects. The rest 90% of the whole thing was done in Adobe Photoshop. Now again, you know, a different approach towards motion graphics and this is my way of sort of working a bit differently and I personally feel that the uh, that the brainstorming capabilities uh, that Photoshop has to offer are a lot better than Adobe After Effects. Uh, why do I say it? Well, you know, if you want to transform something, if you want to move something around, it's a lot easier to work in Adobe Photoshop than in After Effects. And because of the dynamic link between Photoshop and After Effects, you can just send some files to After Effects and, uh, you know, animate them. I'm going to show you how to do that. So let's take a look at what exactly do we have here. So I started with a black BG, all right. I added in a small texture. Um, actually, this this was a again a humongous texture. I scaled it down, and I reduced the opacity to somewhere around fifteen percent. So again, this was the texture I used, right? Scaled it down, fifteen percent opacity, and this is where we are now. Uh, I took the brush tool in Photoshop, added a bit of paint. Again, I may have reduced the opacity. Try something like that. I took the grungy images. Uh, this one right here I took like a chunk of it like you know something around that and I made this right I used the blending options in Photoshop uh, blending some masking using this option right here and uh, to remove all the black and to get this effect right here right and then awesome people I was able to get some particles now how did I get this this is from this right here again you know took a part removed all the black using the blending options from Photoshop and I ended up with that took my text tool, typed this out and what I did was I applied a texture straight on the text layer. Make sense? Superb. And in the end I complete the full look by doing some CC, curves and hue and saturation and this is what we have now. Now once you are happy with what you have in Photoshop, just take this file from Photoshop like for example this file, bring it in Adobe After Effects and take the third option when you are importing a PSD and After Effects. This is, I think, the best option to work with because it's going to give you a lot of freedom, right? And uh, in this, just keep it to the first option right here. Click OK. And there you go. Now, this awesome people is going to be imported as a pre-composition, right? So what we'll do is, instead of starting a work on this, we'll create a new main composition. So this is going to be a main where we're going to, you know, uh, tile up everything. Now I'm going to bring this cold hall 05 here and we have this. now. The problem is that nothing in this is going to animate because, you know, again, this is a Photoshop file, everything is a still image. I'm going to go inside this and I'm going to create a new camera, right? 
and I've covered this topic in my previous video that whenever you create a camera, create a null object with it, turn that into a 3D layer, take the camera and parent it to the null object, right? Now we can apply a position, um, like, a, like a wiggle expression on position 510. Now again, this depends on you, okay? How much intensity you want, how much movement you want. But I'm gonna go with a basic 5 to 10. And you're gonna see awesome people that when I play this, nothing really happens. That is because the layers are not 3D. So turn them into 3D. And awesome people, even now, if you were to play it, only one or two layers would move. Why is that happening? Well, because awesome people, we are working with a lot of pre-compositions. So what we'll have to do is we'll have to go inside them and turn all of them later, uh, layers to 3D, right? Make sense? Again, make, take, turn this into 3D. And the best part about this awesome people using this whole, um, you know, technique or a different approach is that everything is still editable. So what I can do is I can bring in more textures and awkward effects, maybe add in an adjustment layer, you know, use trap code particular, use a shine effect uh, from uh, trap code do all of that and this is by the way still editable so if I just disable this take a new text layer in inside of After Effects I can still type something so if my client says that beyond the wall oh no dude it was beyond the hall right I can still just come in and type something right so, I th so again you know very editable very customizable and that's the whole thing right working with much freedom so you don't get into any sort of problem see same effect so, uh, I, I think this is epic and turn all of them into 3D and I think we are good to go. See, see, just for the heck of it, we'll even turn them into 3D. Now, if I was to play this, you can see the whole thing moves. Now, the only uh, effect that we are missing is a bit of uh, movement in our text layer. So, I'll just do a scale animation real quick and take this to 90 so we have, uh, so we don't end up into any pixelations, right? I was to play this you can see that the scale because of the scale it looks like it's actually coming closer to the camera right makes sense now again you can uh, tweak this a bit change the intensity and that is what you're gonna have now generally what I would do is I would uh, say that you know if you want like six titles for your trailer create six different PSDs and bring them in After Effects instead of duplicating everything over here duplicating in After Effects can be very very confusing and keeping track of things can get a bit um, you know laborish time taking and you know you, you don't want to do that right why take the hard way when you have such an easy option save six PSDs bring all of them uh, all of them in After Effects change your text or if you don't want to change your text just copy paste this you know this right here copy paste this much part this null object and uh, the camera and everything is going to animate so now once you have bought them six layers I'm just going to duplicate this one say you bought all of this just bring them in your main and move them around like that right make sense now again since I have duplicated all of this in After Effects the text is not going to change so it's still going to be beyond the hall beyond the hall beyond the hall beyond the hall but if you do six times this in six different PSDs you can change the text layer so that is how you have a different approach towards motion graphics now to complete this full thing I would take this in see the, the full workflow would be to cut up uh, my trailer in Premiere Pro leave spaces okay I would just put in like a small um, disclaimer or, or a small just a text layer in Premiere Pro that this is where the trailer goes this is where titles come this is where this happens this is where that happens and just cut up footage okay work on your audio then right work on audio then and then do trailer design or title design so this awesome people was inspired from game of thrones action trailer titles in adobe after effects now the last thing was that i was able to add in a little bit of more motion with uh with the particles footage uh, let me just open this for you now this is my original file again you can see how much work i put in now because of the tutorial episode awesome people i cannot sit down to explain you what all I have done because that would be very very time consuming but believe me this was my whole technique okay believe me on this I'm not gonna lie and if you were to follow along and do a little more work a little more exper uh, experimentation you would end up with something like this now there's this one footage that I haven't talked about and that is this video right here this glass breaking video now this awesome people is something that I cannot give away all right I would if I could, I definitely would, but I just cannot, this is not, uh, this doesn't belong to me and I therefore I just cannot give this away and um, you know this is actually a little bit pricey 
So that's the reason why I am not making a perfect tutorial of how to do something like this in After Effects. Rather, I'm talking about the technique. Usually, I do proper tutorials on how to do this technique, how to create this, or how to create that. But today episode, I just want to do like a case study video. And the reason is because of this footage right here. Not everyone can buy this. Not everyone can get their hands on this. And I cannot give it away, right? So I just added this one small footage and it sort of bought a little bit of more depth, uh, you know, because of this bouquet that was here. Now you can create something similar to this in track code particular. But, uh, you know, this just saves me a lot of rendering time and a lot of time in general working with particular to get this effect. Now, this was actually a black and white effect. I added a tint effect on top of it uh, to make it blend in a bit better with the scene. So I did that. And one more thing I wanted to show you guys was how did I do this blur, you know, white overlay effect? Well, it's a very simple effect. I just took the curves adjustment. I uh, animated this. So I went in curves and I animated the graph. So at the first keyframe, you can see that the graph is a bit, uh, you know, it has like a big bump. And this is basically for increasing the lightness. And then after five seconds, it just, you know, I just reset it that thing. I added Gaussian blur. Uh, on the five sec seconds frame, I took the, I just basically animated this. I started the stop watch. So it started with zero. I moved back in time and I took this to 10. So again, 10 and then moves ahead. It comes to zero. All right. Copy paste this full thing on all your uh, pre-compositions and this is what you're going to have. So this is how you do trailer design in Adobe After Effects. This is again, now you can do this whole thing inside of After Effects, but I just thought that this was a bit like a different approach towards, you know, motion graphics in general. Now what you can do is you can even add more textures, more grunge layers, and you can push them in 3D space. So for example, you can take grunginess right here and push this guy back in 3D space, right? I can add some over here and have a different style altogether. Maybe scale this up here rotate it a bit and see how that works right see that see that now, of course you'll have to blend in this a bit but um, that's something that you can try and uh, create something for yourself or for your youtube videos or for your clients right so again thank you so much for watching my video awesome people my name is dj Stell. uh please subscribe hit the like button on this video if you enjoyed this episode and uh, i will see you all next time take care everyone and